Straight Shift. With the Car Chick, the podcast that's all about cars, buying, selling, fixing, and driving. And sometimes pretty fast if you're the Car Chick. Now, here's he is. Hey, everyone, and welcome to The Straight Shift. Today, we are going to talk about something that has been really hot in the automotive news cycle over the past week, the Tesla Cybertruck. Before we get into it, I want to give you a little disclaimer. Well, actually, it's not a disclaimer. It's kind of the opposite of a disclaimer. Tesla is not paying me to talk about their products. In fact, none of the automakers or anyone else pays me to talk about their products on my podcast. The things that I talk about, I talk about because I want to, not because someone's paying me to, and the opinions expressed are mine and mine alone. So now that we have that out of the way, what the heck is a Cybertruck? Tesla's founder, Elon Musk, unveiled this long-awaited electric pickup truck at the Tesla Design Studio last week. They're located just outside of LA, and he calls it the Cybertruck because, you know, that sounds really cool. Tesla's stated goal with this vehicle, as it has been with all of their vehicles, the reason that Elon created this company in the first place is that they want to provide a good alternative, you know, a sustainable energy substitute for all of the fossil fuel powered vehicles that we have on the roads. About 6,500 gas powered pickup trucks are sold every single day in the United States. And that is a lot of fossil fuel powered vehicles. So he wanted to create an alternative to the great American pickup truck, but in electric form. This truck looks more like something out of the original Star Trek series from the 1960s. It's something that I think Gene Roddenberry's props team would have made out of cardboard boxes and then spray painted silver, you know, for them to use on the TV show. Now, I'm not saying that the vehicle is flimsy. It's not made out of cardboard, obviously, but the design of it consists of really large flat panels and these sharp, simple lines. It looks like a large metal trapezoid on wheels, something out of an old science fiction movie, not a vehicle that you would actually drive on the city streets today. And I will put a picture of this up on my Instagram so that you can see what it looks like if you haven't seen it. And yes, I am finally um, actually using Instagram. So you can get my Instagram link um, on my website, thecarchick.com. If you go to the upper right-hand corner of the homepage, all of my social media links are up there, including Instagram. As I said, the body of this thing is not actually made from cardboard, but rather it's made from a newly developed stainless steel alloy. This is literally the same metal that is used for the SpaceX rockets. If you haven't heard of SpaceX, they're a private company that designs and builds rockets and spacecraft with the ultimate goal of enabling humans to live on other planets. So we're totally staying in the Star Trek theme we got going today. Their, uh, their Dragon, it's called the Dragon spacecraft, delivers cargo back and forth to the International Space Station, which, you know, <laughs> that's just really cool that there's a company out there doing that. So, of course, yeah, it makes sense that Elon would want to make his Cybertruck from the same space age material. And he claims that the unique alloy makes the car bulletproof, at least against small firearms. And we will talk more about that claim later because this is where some of the drama and hilarity ensues. But let's talk about what this truck actually has. What are its features? The the crazy reason for the trapezoid space age kind of design is that SpaceX developed steel, it can't be stamped by conventional automotive, you know, body panels. What they do is, you know, in normal cars and trucks that are unibody based and really all the body panels, they take the the metal and they can actually use these massive stamps to stamp it into the shape that they need and then use that to construct the vehicle. Well, this stuff is too tough to stamp, so it can only be bent with massive machinery along straight lines. So think of it as origami, but with metal, if that gives you any idea. And of course, the Cybertruck does use a unibody construction and the reason that they do that, a lot of pickup trucks today still are body on frame, but the unibody construction is necessary for all the electric vehicles because in a body on frame construction, there's no room between the body and the frame for you to have all of those batteries that electric vehicles require. So 
Unibody allows them to do that because the battery packs for the electric cars are underneath the floor. So if any of those you know batteries ever catch fire, which you know is a risk with those types of batteries, the fire will come up from beneath your feet. So you have been warned about that. The truck itself, the bed of the truck is about six and a half feet long. It's similar to a conventional pickup truck bed with a tailgate. It just doesn't look like it because of the weird triangles of metal that come down on the side of it. Kind of think back to the Chevy Avalanche or the old Honda Ridgeline, what that looked like. That's kind of similar to what this looks like, only on steroids. The slip walls are actually pretty cool, though, because they have this integrated um, cargo cover that can slide over whatever stuff you have in the back. Most cargo covers on pickup trucks now are made out of a cloth material, and they're just there to cover things and protect them a little bit, but it's not remotely secure. Elon says that the integrated one on the Cybertruck actually gives you a level of security. You can secure the things that are in the back of that truck. We'll see if that actually works or not, but you know, it's more of an enclosed space. And it also includes LED light strips along the side, which is really cool. So you can see all your stuff and it makes it light up, which looks really funky. You know, but it's a spaceship, so it's got to light up. It will give you additional storage space under or behind the rear wheels, and it has both 110 and 220 volt AC outlets, so you can plug stuff in, and it supposedly is going to come with a compressed air outlet for your air tools, so you can work on your other cars while plugged into your Cybertruck. <laughs> It may or may not include a pass-through to the cabin for longer cargo. That's something they've discussed, but it hasn't been implemented on the prototype model that we saw at the launch last week, but that could materialize once they get into production. But another thing that they've advertised that we'll see if this actually ends up in production as well is a ramp that can extend down from the tailgate to more easily load cargo. And in fact, during the launch when... Uh, Elon had this truck. He drove it out on the stage. And then he also built a little ATV, which I think he just built for fun. I don't think they're actually going to sell those yet. But then he drove the little ATV up the ramp and onto the pickup truck. So that was kind of fun. You know, anything for marketing purposes. But in addition to being able to carry cargo in that bed, it will also have lockable storage spaces under the hood and in the sides of the car. So you'll be able to you know, put all your tools and all your little stuff in nooks and crannies and lock them up so they'll be safe. And you'll be able to adjust the ride height of the truck because it's on an air ride system, which will allow you to kind of adjust that to the comfort level or however much ground clearance you need. Now, the interior has seating for six. It's got two bench seats. In the front seat, the middle can fold down and stop being a seat and start being a center armrest. The rearview mirror is going to be a digital rearview camera, and it has a race car style steering yoke, which you may think, why do you need a race car steering yoke on a pickup truck? But I'll get to that again when I go back to the claims that Musk has made about this thing. The dashboard is actually pretty cool. It's a The material resembles marble, but it's not marble. It's a composite um, based on paper, wood-based fibers, natural wood pigments, and other non-petroleum-based resins. So it is environmentally friendly, which of course goes along with Tesla's whole shtick. So it looks like it's going to be you know, a pretty cool truck. It, it looks like what you would expect out of a Tesla. Simple, yet futuristic, and very, very capable. Now let's talk about the capabilities, or at least the claimed capabilities. Elon Musk said that the vehicle is literally bulletproof to small firearms like a 9mm handgun. So, you know, if you're going to be driving this through, you know, more dangerous city streets or questionable neighborhoods or sadly just about any community in our uh, country these days, you might be protected from drive-by shootings and other small arms fires. So if you piss somebody off in your cyber truck, you may have some degree of additional safety. But what was funny at the launch, and this is what has caused such a, a media frenzy around it, they hit the sides of the truck, the metal body panels, with a sledgehammer without damaging it, which, you know, that bodes well for cyber truck owners, you know, driving in city traffic. And if you get into a car accident, you're probably not going to have a lot of damage. Not sure what it's going to do to the other guys, but hey, that's not your problem. 
But where the hilarity kind of came in was they wanted to demonstrate the bulletproofness of the glass, the windows and the windshield on the car. So Elon took little steel balls and threw them at the shatterproof windows, which shattered. It was absolutely hilarious. The window cracked. It's like when you see a car that has supposedly bulletproof glass, you know, in movies or whatever, get hit by a bullet and you can see the the shattered impact around the circle where the the bullet hit. Well, this is what happened. There it literally looked like, you know, a window that got hit by a baseball, but as Elon claimed, it didn't actually go through and the glass did not shatter and fall into the car, fall out of the car. The glass held together, and that is how bulletproof glass works. But it was really funny when he claimed the glass was shatterproof, and then it promptly shattered when he threw a a steel ball at it. And the other car manufacturers, including BMW, have had a field day on Twitter making fun of him for that. But, you know, hey. It did, however, kind of have a uh, surprising impact to the stock market. Tesla's stock dropped 6%, which is almost $800 million. That tells you how much the company is worth total after that little debacle. But <laughs> it did bounce back, you know, recently. Um, yesterday, he announced that Tesla has already see, received a quarter of a million pre-orders for this vehicle. So that shot the stock back up. But it's kind of, you know, scary how the entire stock market can be affected by, you know, a marketing stunt like throwing a ball at the window of a new vehicle. But this is a car podcast, not a financial podcast, so we're just not even going to go there. What is kind of shocking is that 250,000 people have put deposits down on this vehicle, but I think that's because it's a mere $100 deposit that is fully refundable. So I have a feeling that these aren't genuine deposits. They are people who wanted to be able to, you know, post their Instagram account, hey, look at this picture, I'm going to be an owner of a Cybertruck, but... If 20% of those deposits actually turn into real sales, I will be shocked. But hey, again, Tesla is you know all about the marketing stunts and they are Elon Musk is is king of kind of manipulating <laughs> everything via his marketing and what he says and what he tweets. But hey, you know, at least they're pretty cool cars. But some of the other claims that have also been hilarious and in the news cycle and a little more realistic potentially, Musk claims that the Cybertruck is going to tow and haul more than the Ford F-150 and it will perform better as a sports car than a Porsche 911. Oh, really? Well, he put videos up there at the launch to prove this and the most expensive version of the Cybertruck is supposedly going to be able to carry 3,500 pounds in the bed and tow up to 14,000 pounds and go from 0 to 60 in only 2.9 seconds. This actually is probably a realistic claim because the great thing about electric motors is that they have a flat torque curve. So when you lay on the power, the power instantly comes on. You don't have to wait for anything like you do in a petrol engine. And if you marry that to all-wheel drive, you can lay that power down to the ground if you have good tires. And so, you know, for people that are familiar with electric cars and how they work, being able to go from zero to 60 is one of their great claims. Now, they tend to run out of electricity really fast when you floor it like that. Of course, they did do these tests and backed it up with a video. So the first one was a drag race between the prototype Cybertruck and a Porsche 911. And sure enough, the Cybertruck did pull on that 911 off the line and pulled slightly ahead of it overall in the drag race. But, you know, I'm a Porsche girl, so I need to defend the 911, and I need to kind of analyze these, you know, crazy claims very critically as a journalist. And that was what looked like a base model 911. Granted, a base model 911 is more awesome than most things on the road, but it doesn't have as big of a motor, and it's rear-wheel drive, which doesn't launch nearly as well as if they had used the all-wheel drive 911, which launches like crazy. So it was a little bit of a fixed race, but what do you expect for marketing? 
He also showed a video of a tug of war contest between the prototype Cybertruck and a Ford F-150. And this was the one that was hilarious. The Cybertruck won this hands down. I mean, it was like the, the Ford wasn't even trying and the Cybertruck actually hauled the, you know, towed the Ford F-150 up a hill. It was hilarious. But again, we need to look at it critically, and other journalists have also pointed out that it looks like it wasn't entirely a fair fight. The F-150 they used, which Elon has not stated which model vehicles he used of his competitors, but you know we're not done. We know what these cars look like. It looked to be the base F-150, which has their weakest um, only 2.7 liter V6 motor, and it was definitely rear wheel drive because you can see in the video that the rear wheels were spinning and the front ones were not. So again, in a contest like that, that's kind of an unfair fight. And executives jumped all over it and challenged Tesla to a real, quote, apples to apples truck test. I'm going to take a really quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some other electric pickup trucks that are coming into the marketplace, one of which towed a freight train. So I'll be right back after this. hate car shopping? Do you worry about being taken advantage of or about finding the right car at a great price? Buying a car can be a frustrating and time-consuming experience. But what if you could get a great deal without having to do a ton of research, without having to haggle, and without the fear of buying a lemon? You can. As your personal car shopper, the Car Chick will help you pick the perfect car based on your unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. She'll handle all of the legwork and negotiating for you. All you have to do is sign the papers and take the keys. It's that easy. To learn how the car chick can save you time, money, and hassle on your next car purchase, give us a call at 704-248-8706. That's 704-248-8706. Or visit us on the web at thecarchick.com. Automatic? Automatic? We don't need no stinking automatic. Straight Shift with the Car Chick. Welcome back to the Straight Shift. Today we are talking about the newly announced Tesla Cybertruck, an electric pickup truck from the electric car leader, Tesla and Elon Musk. You know, the last podcast, if you haven't listened to it, I talked about what the impact of electric cars would likely be on the U.S. economy. And some of the data was a little bit scary. So you might want to go back and listen to that if you haven't already, because electric cars are are the thing of the future and all the manufacturers are starting to pour massive amounts of R&D dollars into these vehicles and every year we're seeing more and more actually come to market and Tesla will not be the only car maker that will be tackling the pickup truck segment and converting pickup trucks to electric vehicles. They're going to face some stiff competition over the years, and you know, particularly against the the two pickup truck leaders in America, Ford and Chevy. And before the break, I talked about how Elon demonstrated that the Cybertruck will pull more than a Ford F one fifty by having a little, probably totally unfair tug of war match with it, but. Ford is also developing an electric version of the F-Series pickup trucks. They have a prototype for it, and their video is actually way more impressive. They released a video showing their prototype F-Series electric pickup truck, not towing a competitor's vehicle, but towing a freight train, and in not just one car, like the entire freight train and they filled all the cars in that freight train with other F-150s, 42 of them in fact. So the total weight of the freight train plus the 42 regular F-150s was about 1.25 million pounds and they proceeded to tow it from a dead start with their prototype F-series electric pickup truck. 
Now, without getting into like physics and very detailed math, you know, really the challenge here is in getting that initial towing, you know, overcoming that initial inertia from getting the freight train from zero up to any sort of forward movement because it was still, of course, on the tracks and trains have a very low coefficient of friction between their metal wheels and the metal tracks. So once you get one moving, it's not that hard to keep it moving and even get it to accelerate because its own massive weight and low friction will carry it forward. You can, you know, go from inertia to momentum. Sorry, I'm getting all physics-y on you here, but, you know, it does explain how this vehicle, this Ford electric pickup truck, was able to tow a 1.25 million pound freight train, but it was still really freaking cool. Now, it only towed it for about a thousand feet, and then it promptly ran out of electricity, and Ford has not made any real-world claims as to how much, in reality, the production vehicle will actually tow, or for how long, because that's really been one of the challenges with developing you know, a, a pickup truck, which we buy pickup trucks mostly to haul things and tow things. You know, some people buy them just because they're cool. That was like me a few years ago, but... You know, the purpose of a truck is it's a work vehicle. If it can't haul, it can't tow, what's the point in having one? You might as well just get a little, you know, SUV. So, you know, with electric vehicles, you do have the flat torque curve, and torque is what helps you tow things. But it also uses a lot of power to do that. So, you know, getting, you know, towing something heavy or hauling something heavy is going to drain those electric batteries a lot faster. And so that's what we really haven't seen any true data on in the real world to see how that will work. But clearly Ford and Tesla are investing quite a bit of moolah to solve that puzzle and get it figured out. Ford has not stated when they will go into production with their electric pickup truck. Ford doesn't have any pure electric vehicles yet. They're a little behind the curve on that, but they were one of the first to bring out the plug-in hybrids. So they do have like the Ford Fusion Energy and the little um, Echo, what are, Echo Sport small SUV that are plug-in hybrids. So they're not totally behind the curve. So we'll, we'll wait and see when Ford announces it, but they're going to have to get that figured out and make an announcement fairly soon because their biggest rival GM has already announced their own electric pickup trucks, both under the Chevy and GMC badges, and they expect to begin selling those in the fall of 2021. So we're just two years away from being able to buy electric pickup trucks in the U.S. market. Another rival is a, a startup company, a newcomer to the industry. They're called Rivian. It's a Michigan-based startup, and they are funded by, wait for it, Amazon. <sighs> you know, I love the Amazon Ferry. The Amazon Ferry comes to my house nearly every day, but I'm really not sure I'm prepared for the level of which they're trying to take over the universe. But anyway, Rivian plans to start selling their own electric pickup truck next year. And I will have pictures of this truck on my Instagram as well because it actually looks like a pickup truck. Um, it looks a little like the new Honda Ridgeline, but a little bit more futuristic. But it's not, it doesn't look like something out of Star Trek. It actually looks like a pretty cool little pickup truck, but it's going to cost a boatload more than the Tesla. So, you know, they haven't announced prices yet that I've seen, but we'll kind of see how that shakes out. And they're planning an SUV version of it, which looks a little bit like a Land Rover. Hopefully it will be more reliable than a Land Rover, but it looks pretty cool. I'll post a picture of that one to my Instagram as well. So this gets to the core question of how much are these things actually going to cost? Well, one of the things that Tesla has done is they have pledged to make these vehicles affordable you can argue that you know some of their vehicles, you know, being in the you know seventy, eighty, or even over a hundred thousand dollar price range, aren't affordable to the average American. But as they continue to release new vehicles, you know, they came out with the Model Three at you know a forty thousand dollar price point. So you know that's getting into more affordable. There's you know you can buy a forty thousand dollar Toyota these days. So they're not going to be crazy, crazy expensive. 
because they can't be if they want to be competitive. And so the there will be three versions of the uh, Cybertruck. The single motor rear wheel drive. This is actually what the model is called. It's called, quote, single motor RWD or for rear wheel drive. And that's going to start at just under $40,000. That's really only more about, I don't know, 10 grand more than the bare, bare minimum base price of a Ford F-150 work truck, which nobody buys. And realistically, most people buy the you know, kind of a mid range or at least the extended cab or quad cab of the Ford F-150. And that's starts at 44. So the Tesla Cybertruck is going to be right in there with the price of pickup trucks. If you've never bought a pickup truck or at least gone out there and priced them, it's appalling how expensive they are. Most of the pickup trucks, both Ford and Chevy that I buy for my clients end up being, you know, between like 40 and $70,000 for a pickup truck. It just, ah, it's crazy. But the Tesla will kind of slide right in there. Their mid-range vehicle, which will be called the dual motor all-wheel drive, that's going to start around 50. And then their top-end tri-motor all-wheel drive, which is the one that they used in the drag race against the Porsche and will claim that will tow you know, 14,000 pounds, that's going to start at about $70,000. So that's you know getting into, you're going to pay more for that one and its towing capability than you probably will for a normal gas-powered Ford or Chevy that has, or Ram that has those towing capabilities. And before you ask, yes, the names actually do indicate how many motors the vehicle has. So the single motor rear-wheel drive is rear-wheel drive and has one electric motor in the back, as most electric vehicles do, and then you get up to the tri-motor all-wheel drive, it does have three electric motors, one in the front and two in the back. So it was really nice of Elon to make the naming scheme really easy for us to figure out. Buyers will also be able to select the self-driving option for an additional $7,000, as we have said in the past, it's not truly self-driving yet, and all the lawyers are, you know, screaming, reminding people of this, but it is Tesla's autopilot technology, and eventually, when we do finally get to truly autonomous vehicles, with a little software update, the Cybertruck should be able to literally drive itself. So, you know, hey, it's an investment for the future. If you truly want to drive a tank in morning rush hour traffic, this is the vehicle for you. (laughs) Now we need to talk about, okay, how realistic is this? I mean, is there truly a market for this weird looking vehicle? You know, there's been very little overlap in the target demographics between people that are buying Teslas and people who drive pickup trucks. So I'm sure Tesla has done a lot of market studies, but one of the things that Elon tends to do is he tends to create his own market demand with the crazy stuff that Tesla does. So a lot of the the critics in the industry, and these are, you know, industry experts, they're not just, you know, crazy people that don't like Tesla or don't like Elon Musk. You know, these are people like executives at Kelly Blue Book and, you know, other industry leaders. You know, they're kind of poo-pooing the cyber truck saying that who's really going to buy this thing? There's not a market for it. It's the technology is not there. It's not realistic. But this is the same thing that everybody's been saying about every vehicle Tesla has ever produced since they opened the doors of the company. And they've been wrong to date because Elon does create his own market base, his own customer base for these vehicles with the brilliant marketing that he does. Now, do these vehicles always live up to expectations? No. There is definitely, you know, a a downside to being on the bleeding edge of technology, but Tesla's not afraid of that. You know, they they kind of you know, fly in the face of that type of challenge and adversity. And and that's one of the reasons that whether I like their vehicles themselves or not, I do have respect for Elon and the company as a whole. Now, yes, it will probably continue to be a niche product for quite a while. 
And there's not going to be, as far as we know, at least not yet, any federal tax breaks for buying one of these um, when they launch. And they're due to launch in 2021, the same time that uh, GM plans to launch their electric pickup trucks. So the fall of 2021 is going to be very exciting. I think they'll probably all be released as 2022 models, but I don't know for sure. But, you know, two years from now, we're going to be looking at a very, very different automotive marketplace and you know how many electric vehicles truly will be out there and, and what types will they be. You know, it, it may be tough to kind of get some of the core, you know, pickup truck demographic to get on board with these electric vehicles. You know, I it's, I can only imagine, you know, how much crap you would get for driving an electric pickup truck, like say in, you know, rural Texas, or even in, you know, a place like Dallas or Houston, you know, where they, you know, love their pickup trucks, or it's practically required for you to own one down there, complete with a gun rack. But uh, I'll have to talk to my brother-in-law down there and see if he would buy one. I'd love to get his opinion on that. But, you know, again, this is this is Tesla we're talking about. This is Elon Musk. This is you know someone who has you know proven that he can innovate. He can do things completely the opposite of the way the traditional automotive industry does. I mean, even the basic business model of Tesla is very different from the rest of the global automotive industry and their you know franchise dealer based um, you know business model for selling and servicing their cars. You know, if anyone can be successful in selling an ugly spaceship on wheels, it's Tesla. I mean, after all, they have promised us an amphibious vehicle based on James Bond's Lotus Esprit submarine car from the movie The Spy Who Loved Me, which the Lotus Esprit was still, you know, is still one of my favorite cars, partly because it did the whole amphibious submarine thing in that James Bond movie that I saw when I was a kid. As I said, production on the Cybertruck is scheduled to begin in late 2021. The tri-motor all-wheel drive version will probably begin the next year in 2022, but you can design your very own today on Tesla's website for just a refundable $100 deposit. So folks, that is the scoop on Tesla's new Cybertruck and electric. Yes, it's technically a pickup truck, looks more like a 1960s Star Trek spaceship, but it's out there and you know, we're, you don't put the genie back in the bottle. We're not going back. This is the future of where the automotive industry is going. And I, for one, am going to be excited and thoroughly amused by the direction that we go. Next podcast, I have a very, very exclusive guest. It is very difficult to get this person especially this time of year, you know, on a podcast or any type of live interview, I will be talking with none other than the jolly man himself, Santa Claus. And we are going to talk about his new sleigh, the 2019 Teen Yule Wagen. So be sure you do not miss that one. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, please do so so that you'll get a notification when that and all future podcasts come out. And until then, have a safe and very happy Thanksgiving, folks. I'm out of here. The Straight Shift Podcast is copyright Leanne Shattuck, The Car Chick, 2017. All views expressed by guest and or co-hosts are those of the guest and or co-hosts, and not necessarily those of Leanne Shattuck or the Car Chick. Mm-hmm.